This is your new God Roll PSA for Destiny 2. Arriving tomorrow on April 2nd, we're going to have the Tusk of the Boar Strand Waveframe Grenade Launcher enter the game in Iron Banner. And this weapon will be a meta-defining weapon, especially for PvE. This God Roll is something that you will definitely want to chase for. It did not exist in the game in the previous season. Bungie has just recently introduced it. And this is the first week of Iron Banner where you can grind for this weapon. So make sure, even if you're burnt out on Destiny 2 right now, make sure you get in there and at least try to get a decent roll of the Tusk of the Boar Strand Waveframe Grenade Launcher, the first of its kind. This is a weapon that's very comparable to the Forbearance Waveframe Grenade Launcher, which is coming back with the Into the Light event. But it's important to have a weapon like this in a different slot for various different reasons. The first, of course, being Forbearance is going to be in the Energy slot, which means you could use your Exotic in the Kinetic or Heavy slot only. Whereas if you had a God roll of the Tusk of the Boar, you'd be able to have an Exotic in your Energy slot and your Power slot, so you could pair it with something like the Sunshot or various other Energy Exotic weapons. And not only that, the Tusk of the Boar actually has a better roll than the Forbearance, giving it extremely high ad clear potential. This might very well be the very best ad clear weapon in Destiny 2, if you can get the right roll. In today's video, we'll give you a full breakdown so you know exactly what to grind for this week in Iron Banner. One thing that's nice to mention about this weapon is that it has the origin trait field tested, which is going to make it so that defeating targets or dealing damage gives it increased range, stability, handling, and reload speed. That handling and reload speed will be really nice for a waveframe grenade launcher, and it shouldn't be too hard to get a bunch of kills and do a bunch of damage with this weapon to get to those maximum stacks, which offers at maximum stacks 50 reload. That's actually going to be really crazy and should feel really nice on this weapon. Now let's go through all the most powerful perks it has in the right hand column. We have, of course, Chain Reaction. This is the go to perk for the Forbearance. And the reason why is very simple. Each final blow that you get with the waveframe will explode and then therefore kill enemies that are nearby. This is almost certainly going to be a part of the god roll you're looking for, but it should also be said that the perk Hatchling is here. Just in case in the future, Bungie does nerf Chain Reaction. Action. Hatchling could be pretty interesting based on the number of Threadlings it actually creates because obviously you could kill like maybe five or six adds and if it did create a Threadling from each one, there's some potential there for ad clear. But overall, of course, we are going with Chain Reaction for the God Roll at this point in time. Third perk option is Bait and Switch, which is going to be getting some damage with your other two weapons is going to give a massive buff to this weapon. Now to some of you out there, that might seem really interesting, but usually you don't want to have to use your other two weapons just to buff your ad clear weapon. The Forbearance is so nice to use because you just swap to the weapon, shoot it once, and every everything in front of it dies. But in challenging endgame content where one for Baron shot won't actually clear the room, bait and switch could actually have some application. Next up, we have the perk Swashbuckler, which is going to be getting kills with the weapon or getting melee kills is going to increase the damage. I really don't think you want to run around getting melee kills while holding your grenade launcher out. I think that if you are going to go for the damage perk route, you're probably going to go bait and switch. But again, I would say chain reaction is just a better option overall. Next up, we have Vorpal. Now, this is definitely not a boss damage weapon. If you show up to the boss fight with the Tusk of the Boar, the LFG people are going to kick you, and honestly, rightfully so. Waveframe grenade launchers are not DPS weapons at this point in time. And lastly, we have the perk Deconstruct, which is going to do more damage to vehicles, Titan barricades, turrets, etc. It's not that interesting of a perk. We're definitely going to stick with Chain Reaction in the right-hand column here for the God Roll. In the left-hand column, we have Envious Assassin, which is going to pair perfectly with this weapon when you use your primary ammo weapon, let's say, for example, Sunshot. You get a bunch of kills with your Sunshot, and then those explosions also get more kills. Well, when you swap to your Tusk of the Boar, it's not only going to be reloaded if you already shot it, but it's going to be overflowed, meaning there could be like up to three shots in the magazine, which is going to increase the ad clear potential of this weapon a ton, because if there is a room filled with so many ads, you could shoot three different waveframe shots in three different directions. So Envious Assassin is more than likely going to be a part of the god roll we're looking for here, paired with Chain Reaction. That's going to clear a room of ads in no time, and it'll actually be really fun and impressive to see. The next perk we'll talk about is Enlightened Action, which is going to be dealing damage, improves reload and handling. Now this perk does actually pair really nicely with this, and some of you out there may never get an Envious Assassin Chain Reaction roll of the Tusk of the Boar. And if that's the case and you only end up with an Enlightened Action Chain Reaction roll, that's not too bad. The next perk, however, we've got Grave Robber, Melee, Final Blows, Reload This Weapon's Magazine from Reserves. You're really not trying to run around with a Waveframe Grenade Launcher getting melee kills. So I'm going to say a hard pass for this perk on this weapon. Next up, we have Slice, which reads casting your class ability allows this weapon to sever targets on hit for a brief duration up to a maximum number of targets. Now, severing targets is actually really nice and you think there might be some application for this weapon, but the reality is that we want to shoot that waveframe grenade launcher and watch everything in front of us die. We don't really want to sever all those targets, but if they were really powerful, like a bunch of majors, champions, or etc., severing all those targets reduces their damage output. So it might not necessarily be the worst perk ever here, but it's certainly not the go-to perk that you're looking for. Next up, we have Slideways, which is going to be sliding, partially reloads the weapon's magazine. This one's not too bad either. You can shoot a shot of it and then slide to reload. It does have a decent cooldown, so it's not as reliable as a perk like Slide Shot. 
even though I know the two sound very similar, they are very different. So even though this could potentially reload your weapon really, really fast, I would still favor Envious Assassin over Slideways. And lastly, in the left-hand column, we'll talk about Pulse Monitor. This is going to automatically reload the weapon when you're wounded, even if the weapon is stowed, which can be nice because obviously you're going to get your shields broken from time to time. And having Pulse Monitor proc to auto reload the weapon isn't too bad of a perk, but it's not reliable enough to be our go-to reload perk for any given weapon. So we're definitely going to favor Envious Assassin over Pulse Monitor, and that's going to round out the god roll in terms of the two powerful perks. Next up, we'll quickly talk about the magazine. There's only two options, and one is overwhelmingly better than the other, and that is high velocity rounds. This is going to give you 10 velocity, which doesn't really matter, but more so importantly, 10 reload speed. So just in case, if you do need to reload this weapon, you want it to be fast, you want it to be snappy, and reload speed is going to do you a lot more than 10 velocity, 15 stability, and minus 10 blast radius. So high velocity rounds is the go-to magazine perk here. And then next up for the barrel, we're going to be going with quick launch for 15 more handling on this weapon. This will make the weapon feel extremely nice and smooth when swapping back and forth from it. And lastly, for the masterwork, which isn't as important, we'll probably go with reload speed or handling is just fine, really either or. With either of these equipped, you can see we're almost at maximum stats in all the categories that we want stats, which is going to make this weapon feel extremely nice when you do get the god roll. It also needs to be said that one other reason why the tusk of the boar is better than forbearance is for the fact that it is a strand weapon. And in various different activities, there's different surges that Bungie is now placing on them. Like for example, if you're doing Crow to Zen this week, the surges are Strand Surge and Solar Surge, meaning if you used a Forbearance in that activity, you would be doing 25% less damage than if you were using the Tusk of the Boar. Bungie is using these surges on so many more activities now, which is why you kind of want a god roll of every affinity of every weapon archetype. Like for example, a god roll Solar Hand Cannon, Void Hand Cannon, Arc Hand Cannon, Strand and Stasis Hand Cannon, and a Kinetic Hand Cannon, all six of the current affinities. So that way you have the right tool for the right job based on the activity. If the activity says it's time for Arc Surge, then you can throw on that Arc Hand Cannon or the Forbearance, for example. But if the activity says Strand Surge, then it's time for the Tusk of the Boar. To me, this weapon will be absolutely irreplaceable, and I almost won't be taking this weapon off for a very long period of time. You're going to see me flying around in PvE using the Tusk of the Boar, the Sunshot, and an Egret Sword for almost every activity from here on. Unless it's an extremely challenging activity, then of course we'll spec into that with different weapons. Maybe still using the Tusk of the Boar, though, for ad clear, simply because it's a strand weapon. One of the only reasons why people don't use Forbearance in challenging content is because it's not Arc Surge. But since Strand came out with Lightfall, Bungie likes to put that particular Surge on almost all the activities, meaning that Tusk of the Boar is about to get extremely high usage rates, and it really is just a weapon that is a must-have god roll. I can't recommend enough that you go into Iron Banner and actually grind for this. And if you don't believe me that it's extremely good, well, stay tuned for the update video when I do get that god roll. After grinding this out on my live stream on Twitch, let me know what you think about the Tusk of the Boar in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe and follow the channel. Stay up to date on all the news in Destiny 2. Smash the like button, save this video. It helps me out a ton and I appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Later.